Hey guys, so today I'm going to be looking at the KDE based Ubuntu distribution for 14.10 Kubuntu. Now this is the final uh, snapshot beta, which means it might be a little bit rough around the edges, but should give a pretty good impression about what to expect come October when the final release swings around. Now, uh, I've mentioned this on previous um, first impressions reviews on the other iterations of Ubuntu, um, so I'll mention it here, but I've been unable to actually install the uh, CD onto my virtual machine. So I'm actually running the live CD at the moment, uh, which actually gives you a pretty good rundown about what to expect. It gives you an example of the software bundle and the visuals uh, for the for the installation. But like I say, this is a final snapshot beta, so there are still going to be some uh, some bugs that are going to be needing to uh, work out, and it's going to be a little bit rough around the edges, but again, uh, it should give us a good, um, a good idea about what to expect. So, uh, KDE, right. It's always been one that I've actually quite enjoyed using. I liked that it's been quite polished, although I've got to admit, in my experience, I've had a fair number of problems with the bugginess of KWIN. I don't know whether or not or how far they've gone to actually work out those particular bugs, and they've been minor bugs at... Uh, at worst, really, so um, so it's not too much to uh, to concern ourselves over. Um, so anyway, this is um, it. Always reminds me a little bit of Windows Seven, does KDE. Um, in fact, it was Windows Seven before Windows Seven was even thought up. Um, but it does use, of course, the um, the panel menu and a panel menu design, which I actually quite like. I like the idea that the categories are, are nice at the bottom, so you don't have to go. Uh, moving your mouse around too much to actually get to where you want to go. It's just uh, menu button, applications, internet, and then do that. Now a lot of people will use uh, the search box. So if you wanted to do Firefox for example, you could do that. Um, I don't know if there is a quick launch shortcut, so let's have a look at the application launcher settings, keyboard shortcut. So it's Alt F1, Alt F1. Right. Well, I can't just have the mate, uh, the the meta. Uh, meta and Z. Does that? Oops! Oops! That. Uh... Right. Right, okay. There we go. So, uh, so you can't have the, the Windows key to actually open up the menu, uh, neither could you on the um, Zubuntu uh, installation. But you can do Windows and Z, or Meta and Z, and then just type in Firefox if you want to do a keyboard-based navigation. I'm going to assume that Alt and F2, yeah. So I'd go with Alt and F2, to be honest. Alt and F2 works in LXDE, it works in KDE, and I'm pretty sure it works in the other desktop environments. That's a pretty standard um, practice now at this point that it comes up. So, I've got to admit, this is quite a, a graphically pleasing desktop, and KDE has always paid a good, um, a decent amount of homage to, to eye candy as well, and it's one of the things I've always liked about it. Um, I'm not a big person for particularly frivolous and uh, uh, desktop effects and things like that but I like that there is the option to have them there because I know that it caters to people that do kind of like something a little bit more pretty personally I just want responsiveness as you know as, as much as I can so um, let's have a look at the software bundle comes with Firefox now it could come of course with Conqueror which is the KDE default um, browser but again Firefox I think it's just it's a nice gold standard in regards to browsers the licensing is good it's it's a company like Mozilla of course being a non-profit organization means that it's 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 more trustworthy than say its corporate competitors um, and it's a nice starting point now maybe you might be a chromium or Google Chrome fan you might even require Google Chrome if you use a lot of flash online but um, it's nice that it makes the, the the initial offering as the Firefox browser simply because it's just it's one that everyone can get along with to one degree or another. Uh, okay, so it's got uh, your Dolphin file manager. That's your your, uh, your sort of garden variety KDE uh, win, um, file manager. Well, that's pretty nifty. It's got uh, got a nice little history thing on the side there. You can search for documents, you can search for audio files. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, I got I kinda like Dolphin on, on that capacity there. Um, it comes of course with KDE instant messaging contacts. 
so let's have a look let's have a look at what instant messaging accounts are available on the kde instant messenger we got jabba xmpp kde talk i didn't know that was a thing uh google talk of course that's pretty pretty awesome that uses xmpp but it doesn't use the um it doesn't connect with other servers it says that it's kind of it's worried about spam being an issue there on on google talk which is i guess it's some degree of there's some degree of justification in it but i would like to see google be a front runner in xmp uh, xmpp they said they were they they said they attempted it but for uh, for reasons basically surrounding that none of the other companies kind of wanted to work with Google on this when they'd rather compete than cooperate. Uh, Google decided to put XMPP on the on the back burner, at least when it comes to um, communicating, you know, cross server, which is um, which is a shame. And then it's got all. Let's have a look at all. So it's got Yahoo Messenger, Zephyr, Windows Live Messenger, uh, Novell Groupwise, KDE Talk, Jabber, Google Talk. I don't know what Gadoo Gadoo is. AOL Instant Messenger. Um, a number of these have got to be XMPP based, haven't they? Oh, Windows Live Messenger uses XMPP. Yeah, but Windows Live Messenger, is that depreciated? Is that even being used anymore? Because I'd imagine it would at some point be um, absorbed into Skype, which is very proprietary, and Skype is bad. We don't like Skype. Because um, it's just crummy support for Windows. Like, I mean, at least with Google Hangouts and at least with Google as a company, they might, they, you know, we might have our criticisms of it, but at least they at least contribute something to the open source community, or at least they contribute a lot more to the open source community than Microsoft, as well as a lot more Linux support for Flash and and just about everything else as well. Of course, minus the uh, the the ever not present Google Drive client, which we're still expecting, but yeah, there we go. Okay, anyway, uh, enough of that particular ramble. Um... So Blue Devil with Bluetooth management, it comes with a solid feed reader, IRC client. This is a very full. Uh, this is a, this is a very full feature set. A CF editor. What's that? Is that a plain text editor? I um, I'm not entirely sure what it is. Okay, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what the CF editor is. Um. What else have we got here? Let's have a look at the Office. So it comes installed with LibreOffice. Again, I do believe there is a KDE um, in-house kind of um, Office suite, um, but for one reason or another, they've decided not to include that. Um, it's almost like Kubuntu is... I don't know. It seems like it's trying to appeal to, to what the majority of people would like to use, even if that's not necessarily what's within the confines of KDE's own libraries, which I've got to admit is, is pretty sensible. Really, so I certainly respect them for that decision uh, and not being um, too insular and not being too, you know, too inward looking, I guess. And then you've got all the settings. Now, I won't go through the system settings too much because there are a lot of them. KDE is fantastic when it comes to customization. Uh, you can customize it so that it requires less speed. Um, or less root system resources, so it, it runs faster, um, and and the you can change just so much of the visuals as well. The desk uh, desklets are also quite good. You can add all the widgets there, and there are a lot of widgets. Yeah, a lot of widgets that can go on the desktop. Now I've never been a desktop widgets kind of person, but that being said. If you are into your desktop widgets, you will absolutely adore what KDE has to offer. So, uh, again, it doesn't appear to have moved on too much. There do seem to be like steady improvements as there have been with all the other Ubuntu distributions. So, fair play to them on that one. Again, um, the community-based uh, Ubuntu distributions are, are sort of slow and steady. They're, they're progressing in the way that they should. They're not doing anything drastic. They're not doing anything stupid either. Um, and I've got to got to give them kudos for that one because it, sometimes it can be impulsive. Sometimes, uh, it, you, you know, you really want to shake things up a bit, not necessarily for the benefit of the community, but for, um, uh, for, for, for just trying to break outside the box once in a while. But um, I... I I, I'm happy to say that I do feel that the um, needs and desires of the community appear to have been met here, and they appear to have been respected. And I think that um, you know that's that's a very good thing, a very responsible thing. And I think that KDE uh, and Kubuntu uh, are moving in the direction um, 
that's beneficial to to their users by the looks of it. One thing that has stood out to me now, I test all my um, all these distributions on virtual machines. Um, and when you do test uh, distributions on virtual machines, you take a performance hit, uh, which means that it might be a little more slaggery, uh, staggery. You might get um, a few, few uh, fewer frames per second, so it might look a bit uh, look a bit uglier. Uh, sometimes you can't get the 3D visual nice graphical effects working. Um, as you can see, um, if I just even just open up uh, the Dolphin File Manager again, the 3D virtual effects. Um, work really nice and in fact it's it's very responsive for a virtual machine that's running a live cd so um they seem to uh, the the a lot of the improvements here um and like i, I like i said I, I didn't review kde six months ago when it came out on the long-term support release but um compared to how bad it could be and how bad i'd be willing to overlook it it's actually massively surpassed performance expectations um so again kudos to, to them on that one because it looks good and it runs nicely and and those two i suppose ideally and really should go hand in hand and they do here so um judging from what i see here and i'm not a, a i'm not the biggest kde user in the world so i might not even necessarily be the best person um to, to, to lay any recommendations out but if I was a KDE user and if the things that KDE focused on um, were the same things that I focused on I'd be very very happy with this distribution really so um, so again as with the rest of the community based Ubuntu distributions um, it's it's a steady improvement and um, and it's one that respects um, the the integrity of the community or at least it certainly looks like that way to me so uh, and it comes with a fantastic software bundle actually arguably probably one of the best I mean that KDE instant messaging client is definitely um, one of the best I've seen if not the best I've seen Dolphin file manager again it, it looks pretty amazing um, what is the email client actually what is the email client is it the mail oh, it's Kmail let's have a look at Kmail um, because all the others have come with Thunderbird with the exception I think of Lubuntu, um, which is which is interesting actually, because KK Mail, yeah. Tip of the day. That actually looks really nice. Yeah, nicely integrated, I'd imagine. Work offline. Automatic archiving. Yeah, I'd I'd, I'd be quite happy if I was a, if I was a KDE. Uh, user, I'd, I'd quite like the look of that actually. Um, again, it's it's nice when your programs integrate well into your desktop environment. Um, but then again, I guess at times uh, it, it sometimes maybe I don't know. I say it might feel like it restricts your choice, but it doesn't necessarily restrict your choice because instead of having the KDE based Office suite, uh, they've included LibreOffice, which is something that's a little more universal. Um, so just because um, KDE comes with a full suite of, of of just about every kind of application you can imagine doesn't mean you're restricted to it. And um, and again, that's to be respected. Um, and I like the choice and modularity of KDE and the Qt libraries. And I think the Qt libraries have been moving uh, lightning fast in terms of their progression, in terms of their development. And it's looking really, really good. And I'm going to be looking forward a lot to when my personal favorite desktop environment, LXDE, starts moving over to Qt libraries in a, in a big way. And, and when uh, Lubuntu starts using the Qt libraries, because I think we'll see a massive improvement in the quality of bundled software. Um, and I think we'll see a, a much greater improvement in integration and... Um, and, and, and visual appeal and all of that good stuff so um, so I certainly owe a lot to the KDE community even though I may not be a particularly active member in it uh, and, and let's not beat around the bush the best the best open source software is Qt based you get Scribus, Caden Live, uh, VLC Media Player you know they they are very very good piece of software and they all work in the QT libraries. So that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching don't forget to let me know what you think down in the comment section below and until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome take care now. So this is just the end slate just to let you guys know uh, what other kind of projects I'm working on for those of you that don't know I have a, a second channel where I do more informal casual type stuff and I also have a gaming channel so if you guys are into that kind of stuff uh, you might want to check those out also if you want to ask me any questions or just have a chat about whatever it is that I've been talking about in this video feel free to check out my Twitter and my Tumblr as well I spend a fair amount of time on them toodaloo